to Jay Jake Jackets. Gear up to fire the cannon and hit the ice with your host, Jay Ashdown and Jake Gehringer. Well, it's too late to respond now. I'm just happy I'm a day closer to that. So, yeah, exactly. Like you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. It's fun little secret. Yeah, of course. And like people like always like I, I know like uh, psychologically are like oh I don't want to double text because I don't want to come off annoying and I'm always like no please double text if you don't double text me you will not get a response you will never get yes <laughs> you will never hear from me. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Um I'm that way sometimes. I completely forgot to text my mom today. Thank you for getting me groceries. <laughs> Oops. Right, <yeah. laughs> she texted me. She's she said that herself, like, you're welcome for the groceries. I'm like, whoops. <laughs> like, yeah, no, nah, word. I was gonna thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. Um I want to start this one off by talking about uh, some music for a minute. Because, I mean, this is more than just a hockey podcast. This is a pop culture cast, Are you right? going to talk about what I think you're going to talk about? Um, you introduced me to something really fun. Don FM? <laughs> Let's go. Are you kidding me? Yes. No, I was actually I was meaning to ask you if you've listened to it. I did that. I did that night. Dude, uh, that you texted me about it oh my god he is unbelievable isn't he? you see why i am such a that was part of the text that you didn't read was i i told you i was like <laughs> yeah i liked it <laughs> wait what i'm pretty sure i texted you that i liked it <laughs> you may have i'm horrible at reading text but oh no i didn't I didn't. Okay. You just recommended it, and I was just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna listen to it." Yeah, I couldn't remember if I recommended for you to listen to it or not. You did. I, you, you've probably checked my Twitter and been like, "Jesus, it's the only thing he's tweeting about." It's posting. the only thing the weekend's tweeting about is lyrics to his oh, things. Dude, <laughs> so freaking good. Which is actually really fun to like just it's see so him tweeting too. lyrics. But like, like he made it like a freaking radio station. That's a fun. Yeah. Okay. So. I've always loved concept albums. Mm -hmm. Like A Thousand Sons is one of my favorite of like, it's my top two of the seven Linkin Park albums there are for a reason. Right. It's a it's masterpiece. A really good album. It's a masterpiece. It's yeah. a whole, it's Fair. something concept albums like that, where you have to just listen to it from beginning to end. Yes. Like you, you have to like the first time you listen to it, you can't like, listen to certain songs like people recommend no you have to listen to it straight through yes and the fun thing about a thousand sons is it's like it's a whole you know dialogue on like nuclear war mm -hmm. which people don't realize yeah and it's just it's such a crazy listen yeah but this one's interesting. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to school everybody about the weekend for a little bit here because we here comes the simp, everybody. I just... <laughs> no, no, you whatever the hell you want. I love this man. I would do anything for him. Anyway, um, we know. so the first like full like album that like was released by him was called Trilogy, and Trilogy was basically yes, okay. three things that were you know mixed into one. So it was the House of Balloons mixtape. It was the Thursday mixtape. And it was um, the Echoes of Silence mixtape. So three parts in one coming right. together. Yes. He tweeted the other day. Did you? Yes, I saw this. Another trilogy. I was freaking out because I was like, oh, my God. We thought that this was ju just going to be the follow up to After Hours, which it was. We didn't realize there was a whole other part coming after. And <laughs> we realized in the song, I think it was what, uh, Every Angel is Terrifying. That's basically mm -hmm. an advertisement for the next album, which should be. Oh, that's fine. Afterlife. So you go from After Hours to Dawn FM to Afterlife. So you're going from After Hours, which are like the moments before death, to right. 
Dawn FM, which is which is the purgatory, purgatory stage, purgatory. yeah. And then after, like, I'm so I don't know when it's gonna come out. I'm so freaking excited already. He just dropped an album. I love it. It's unbelievable. I can't stop listening to it, and I'm already looking forward to the next album. <laughs> It's it's a fun one for sure because you mentioned that it's got a bunch of eighties vibes and I liked that. It's um, unbelievable. This dude could, he is unbelievable at that because he somehow finds a way to give you the eighties vibes while also making it current. Yeah, for sure. And that's the nice thing about the way he mixes his stuff. Um, and the transitions in the album are unbelievable too. I saw somebody said something like Jim Carrey's in it. Yeah, he's the sample. He does the, radio, he does the radio voice. Oh, he is the radio voice. That's yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and J- J- Jim Carrey, like you wouldn't think of him as like a radio. That's why it's Phantom Regret by Jim. Oh, yeah. I just noticed exactly. that. Yeah. So uh, he he does the radio. Show. He, he did a really good job on it. Oh yeah, he did. I liked uh, a tale by Quincy with the Quincy Jones yeah, sample, yeah. and I love it because like, like that was was like a short like cool part of the album, and then like th- those like small ones have just the best like outros to it because the transitions into the next song are unbelievable. And the songs are like just little radio static. It's like really fun. Yeah, exactly. Like it, I did not know because when he announced that like he was going to come out with another album and it was going to be called The Dawn, we all figured it was going to be the connection to After Hours, which it was. But we didn't realize until like maybe a week or two before he dropped the album that it was supposed to be like a radio station kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely a cool element. And then you've got like the transition from um what is it from is there someone else to starry eyes the first three times i listened to the album because i listened to the twitch thing the twitch like virtual concert that he did yes so that was just like them like looping the music and stuff like that and so first listen of the album i didn't realize until the third time around that is there someone else and starry eyes were two separate songs i just thought it was one. Oh song. yeah i it love that that good that's that my favorite part about concept albums like that is when Mm -hmm. they blend into something like i get that with um you know going back to a thousand suns uh empty spaces is just like a cricket yeah march interlude that goes into Mm -hmm. when they come for me and then like jordana del muerto is this nice instrumental thing that goes right into waiting for the end and it's like it blows your mind (laughs) <laughs> i will say I um stop gushing about it like you've already got me good way way to get me going for the podcast like i really <laughs> you're welcome this. take my breath is definitely my favorite so far i gotta listen to it again just to go through yeah. it again but and the, so far, that, yeah like, that and the sacrifice are probably the two biggest hits from it because take take my breath's been out for a little bit like he oh that it. was already a single okay it was already a single he released it god i want to say back in august or september maybe so that one's actually been up for a decent amount of time but um it, it's still like really cool the transitions with it too because uh well it was how, how do i make you love me transitioned into that song and i love mm-hmm. how that like kind of blended in together and then i did before we actually get going on the hockey talk because there was hockey surprisingly Yes, there's there's hockey. This isn't just a, a weekend podcast. Yeah. I, I, would I wanted to. I wanted to mention there are a couple uh, albums that I've been listening to as well, um, just on my own time, and that's um, a couple of Goo Goo Dolls albums. No, oh, nice. That are really nice. Uh, Let Love In is one of them, mm. which I mean, that was <laughs> that was a couple recommendations, and then. Um, uh magnetic i just listened to at work yesterday and that one was fun nice so this, that one's got a more like upbeat yeah vibe to it and i like that yeah and i really like and going back to, to dawn fm i like that it was really uh-huh. upbeat because because after hours is like so freaking depressing <laughs> well that's what a- he's known for isn't it like is the yeah. is like the ghostly depressing the incredibly depressed all the way you know from my dear melancholy directly into after hours those two back to back good god that was just such a depressing era 
but I mean, and, and even a significant portion of trilogy too. And then he, he did the mirror maze in the Super Bowl or whatever. Yeah, God, it his, became his a meme. Performance of the Super Bowl. <laughs> <sighs> so uh so hockey <laughs> yeah I, I guess we should talk about hockey i guess so um god what a game last night yeah i didn't know the nhl was bringing back ties but hey <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the montreal game got postponed as we yeah. know um they did play the devils and they beat the devils yeah my uh, Kepi keeper. I, mean, I think I know where your Kepi's going. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Uh, actually, let me think. <laughs> really? Because I can't even... I can barely remember that game. If I'm being honest with you, I actually can barely remember really? the game. Because yeah. your boy had a good game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Borky, Borky was back. And yeah, that's where it's going. um had himself a night i'm gonna say jake had himself a night too if i'm being honest with you yeah so mr 1000 was in there yeah he had a couple of assists in that game he's doing pretty well um but you know me i don't like agreeing with you on cap not that i (laughs) i don't like having like the same player Mm -hmm. because you know, unless it's like a special performance. Like if, if a Blue Jacket scores four goals, I'm not going to be like, no, but I really like this guy's performance. <laughs> like, you know what I, mean? like, I really liked Liam Foodie that night. Yeah, yeah no, he, he has some good energy in his third line minutes. Uh, no, I, I'm actually, you know, you know, I love giving it to the kids. So uh, mm-hmm. good goal next. How about, uh, I think first Kepi? No, because I gave him a Kepi for his for first me. Oh, that's yes. That is, so, I believe that is your first Kepi to Yegor. A good Kepi next for Yeager Bomb. Um, we we discussed this on the last podcast that we want to see him get more minutes because yes, <laughs> what the, what's the point of having him up here if he's not going to be playing significant minutes to to show us something and to, to right. improve the team and but, cool too because like cool too yeah he's like, regressed a lot and. I don't like seeing that yeah you never like seeing that but it, it's not the the thing we have to remember and and keep in context for for these two two guys is thank god cole is still 18 correct cole's still 18 yegor's 20. 20. So they're very young it's their rookie season so yes these things happen yes. I, I always think back to uh you know no matter how talented you are unless you're like the first or second overall pick in draft. Um, I, I don't expect absurd production from you in your rookie year. Like think about it. Like I think Ryan, Ryan Johansson was the fourth overall pick in, in the 2010 draft. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he didn't even play immediately in the NHL. He got sent back to juniors before he played for the blue jackets in the, the 2011 season. And I think he finished with like 19 points in the season. So ah. and, his production wasn't, you know, absurd, but like he still went on to be a, a very good player as as Blue Jacket in for you know the, the first half of his career in Nashville. Can we talk about that for a second um, after we're done with the game recap? Because that just made me think of something. Yes, um, but th- that's like the the thing for for Cole. You can think about god this kid's 18 years old he was drafted 11th over like he, he, he was, wasn't even supposed to yeah be he was just outside of the top roster. 10 like he was he really you would have projected after drafting him that he was probably going to get sent back to juniors mm-hmm. because that's what happens with most guys he's the only player from the draft who's in the league right now right he's the only one that stayed and it's like it just shows how much dedication he has to his game and yeah, it, it, it shows a maturity level to his game. So the, yeah. even when this guy isn't producing, they still like him enough that, they, that they're throwing him out there consistently just every game. So Right. Uh, so the Jackets beat the Devils in the rematch. Mm-hmm. I tweeted a hilarious photo after the game of the <laughs> jersey. It just said loss on it. <laughs> yeah, of the jersey that said loss. I love funny. it. It said coming soon. 
yeah. or available soon or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think because, like, was that Jonas? I feel like that was Jonas. Yeah. In that, in that, yeah, 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 because he had the save of the year candidate. Oh yes, yes, I remember this so now. Save on Nico Heischer. <laughs> um, I remember this now because I was like, oh, but my fantasy team. <laughs> yeah, because I remember. This, good God, like this guy is like the most frustrating goalie in the world because he sees some of the goals he allows, and then he has the flexibility, and then he has <laughs> some of the best. Yeah, and you're just like, dude, come on. Can you show this on a consistent basis, please? It is like uh, you know I've, I've said it before that he's a frustrating goalie and and it's not to, to it's not be, to diminish yeah, him. It's not. It's it's just to say like you can see the flexibility, you know, the way that he can stretch out. Yeah, the, he has on his skates moving. Which I mean, up, he's got to be careful with that. Still, I would think. You would think, but like at the end of the day, like my, my point here is, you see the individual talent level his abilities in certain areas like his mm-hmm. quickness lateral movement ability to track the puck and then you watch him in a net and you're just like how is this guy not putting it together i want to say some of it could still be lingering from that leg injury against the black wow. so that you like from two years ago I mean, it could be because you never I mean, know. I guess, but at, at the end of the day, if we're going to say that, then uh, you know, everybody loves to just for, forget about the numbers and just think about how great Corby was against Toronto. It didn't bother him then. And Tampa. Yeah. So it, like. Just... So. So I would I, assume I, he's I fine there, but it. it's not. Yeah, I, it could still be something mental. Who knows? I think it's mental with this guy. I do, and. and, and because you see the frustration in him sometimes when he gives up goals. And, and I don't mind emotion from a goaltender. Well, but... we saw that with Elvis too recently. Yeah. Like, I don't mind my guy showing emotion in that, but it, it's, right. it's more often than not you see it with him. And there's definitely a component of him not being able to control his emotions at times with, with frustration. You know, every once in a while is fine. We, we've seen Tuka mm-hmm. show uh, emotion every once in a while. We've seen Flurry show emotion every once in a while. Carrie Pre- you see it. it. It's fine. Yeah. But it can't be a consistent behavior when things aren't going your way. And that seems to be an issue with him. Yeah. Um, I hope he finds it. I mean. Yeah, like, like we said last time, I, you know, I, I, I hope, I definitely hope he finds it. I hope he finds it. I hope Elvis finds it because uh, it would be awesome to have two great goalies in that. You know, yeah. everybody in Columbus wants to make it a battle between uh, Corby and Elvis when it's never been that. It and it always... was never a battle between Bob and Corby. It was yeah, no. just like at the end of the day, the battle isn't between the two goalies. It's whichever goalies in that <laughs> which is the goalie on the other end of the ice. Yeah, it's people forget just how good of an actual like tandem that split was just you know in just the, the original shortened season that got cut short yeah, yeah. in 2019 20 you know they come out El- elvis struggles because he's a rookie right and corpy has to take the load of it and before he and got he hurt, was carrying the burden yeah. and willing this team into a playoff it was, spot. It was the best stretch of his career. You know, I've I've talked about his numbers and everything like that. I think that those numbers were kind of an outlier for the course of his career, um, mm-hmm. compared to the other numbers. But still, at the end of the day, that was the production when he was the consistent starting goalie that year. His numbers were very good up until he got hurt, and then when he got hurt, and Elvis started stringing together starts and getting more playing time, and that he put together an unbelievable second half of the Elvis season. Elvis was it phenomenal when he was like, yeah, it was definitely you know like there were just because of his name. There's a reason why there's memes everywhere, like, right? It's yeah. fucking Elvis. There's Elvis entered the building. Come on. <laughs> His 
first 10, I'm pretty sure, like, what, his first 10 appearances in the National Hockey League, he didn't have a win, and his numbers were horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, Corpy gets hurt, and then he was so good the second half of the season after that happened that people were talking about maybe he should win Rookie of the Year. Ultimately, he didn't. He was in the Calder conversation, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, my God. He ultimately didn't really come close to winning because it it was too small of a sample, but – It was at least deserved to be talking about, like, he should at least be, you know, be in the conversation. He should at least get a couple of votes. Really freaking good. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's how damn good he was. And ever since, it's been this battle because people saw um, in in, in the bubble, Corpy played so well. And then. Well, you also mentioned the attachment to players is really weirdly strong it's, with it's some strong, of this fan base it's really strong in this fan base man because there have been the, the moments in terms of the success in the playoffs have been so few far in between mm-hmm. that you do kind of hold on to those those moments and and i get it yeah uh, and you also hold on to the players who've shown the loyalty because there have been so many players who haven't and you know Cor- corby has signed multiple contracts here to stay and I get that from people from that perspective. Elvis like, and Z and Oliver, yeah. they all sign their long terms here. That's why, even though you you could understand from a production standpoint, the you know Cam for Vortech trade made sense. People were still pissed about it because because Cam committed. Cam kind of, all things considered, I know Nick was the captain during that era. That that Cam was here and. Mm-hmm. We had other players like Doobie. He was here for so yes. long, but he was Artie kind of, for a while. He was, he was Mr. Blue Jacket, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Cam was yeah. the embodiment of the you know the whole who organization wanted to be here. The, the the city, everything. Yeah, and there's a reason why Matt still works with him on six fourteen clothing lines. Like, yeah, come on. <laughs> Yeah. There's a reason why he still works with Nick on clothing lines. It's exactly. Because it's, these guys love the city. Yeah. And and they they, they may not be here anymore, but they love Columbus. There are players who recognize it. You know, they they you know, players aren't stupid. Cam Atkinson kind of went through it. Like he was still a young kid, but he went through um, you know, Rick Nash being traded. Yes. Through yeah. Ryan Johansson being traded, through Bobrovsky leaving, Panarin leaving. Um, and hell, he, was, he even went through, you know, Pierre Luc Dubois being traded. Yes, he did. He, yeah. So he, he, under, he understood, he understands all of it. And Nick, Nick too. They, those are two guys who understand uh, the pain of the fan base and how much the city of Columbus means to the people who live there. And how, you know, this is a fan base that takes it personal when players want to leave. It absolutely is. I mean, you know how heartbroken both of us were when Bob left. Like, we understood it, but at the same time, it just... I understand it, yeah, because we're both big Bob guys. I love love Sergey. I still love Sergey. Like, come on. (laughs) Because, I mean, for for the era that we started to really get into hockey... um, He was the guy, yeah. We, we got season tickets the 2010-2011 season, but I was just starting to get into hockey at that point, so I went to some games, had some fun. But the first, even though Rick Nash was really good, and I got to see him several times, the first Blue Jackets player I fell in love with was Sergei Bobrovsky. Yeah. And I'm sure it was the same for you. Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, so, I started around high school, and it was just like I saw – his personality and the numbers he was putting up and God. just how cheery he was like come on it was unbelievable and how he interacted with fans i remember i went to like a fan remember fest. when he still didn't really know english and he still tried his damnness yeah and you know i just i remember and he learned english and then he like he joined twitter and facebook mm-hmm. for a yeah. while and <laughs> one of my favorite memories from from like the, the beginning of that era was I went to one of like the Blue Jackets fan fest things for season ticket holders, mm-hmm. and they specifically had a rule to like make autograph sessions go quicker for players not to take photos, 
and Nick Foligno and Sergei Bobrovsky said, fuck that rule. And they took photos with everybody that they yeah. could because that's just the kind of people that they were. I, I, I you know, I know he, he left and went to Florida. I, I'm still always going to root for him. I, oh, absolutely. I, love, I, I want him to do well. Um, it's, it's a shame that it, it didn't work out better for him, especially in the playoffs uh with us but Mm -hmm. i'm I'm not gonna look back on that era not in a fond way i'm always gonna look back on that in a fond way because he was the first first player i ever really fell in love with yeah uh and he was my first jersey come on yeah and i understood like the business aspect of it the blue jackets didn't want to give him us an eight-year contract because dale talon's a hell of a drug we'll start there yeah we did, they didn't want to give 10 million dollars and they were also like yes yeah, so we're going to try it out with corpus l and if it doesn't work with him we still got this kid uh named elvis who we drafted in the third round who was supposed to be pretty good and right i'd say it's worked out pretty well so far mm-hmm. um, and they locked him up so I, I, I'm, I'm happy with the current situation with elvis but yeah no man it just that that whole era with sergey man it's just i'm always gonna love that yeah I'm always gonna love it. Uh, how about the captain with his 13th goal of the year, eh? Yeah, no, he's he's been he's been awesome, uh, and we've talked about him several times. It, it's it's nice. That, I think the thing I'm appreciating most about his game has been the the consistency with it because he, he started off so damn well, mm-hmm. scoring goals in bunches, you know, and and it's like this isn't the most sustainable thing, but. Even though the last maybe week or so, maybe three weeks, the goal scoring hasn't it's it's cooled off a bit. Off. Yeah, it's cooled off a bit. It's not like his game has tapered off at all. It, it's it's not for a lack of it's effort. Still the effort Boone goes, Jenner. Yeah, it's still classic still, Boone Jenner hockey. Yeah, we went, even when he's not. That's the thing I love about him is because when he's not scoring goals, he still has an impact on the game you just see him out there and you notice him everywhere yeah and that's that's why he's a perfect blue jackets captain like Mm -hmm. you know we saw that with nick too like he had his scoring touch but he will he'll go yeah he'll bang and crash and ruin your day and that's the thing that we love about boone is because i I remember um it's been inconsistent over the years but i remember his rookie year watching him play. And then the second year, I think I think it was his second year in the league. Maybe it was third. He had a 30 goal season. Um, yes. And he, he was so damn good. But I remember watching him and I was like, I love this guy because this guy is a young Brandon Dubinsky. Yeah. And that's I, a good, that's a good comparison. I like that. Yeah. And like, we've seen the elements of it, but it's been kind of, lacking at times been inconsistent over here mm-hmm. now that he is the captain of this team and he is driving the ship it has been every night we are seeing that impact from him absolutely it's, so even though the, the blue jackets see. have struggled over the last couple of weeks uh it's not at it, it, there's no associated association between that play and him he has been it's not lost on boone players. yeah yeah no it's he's been he's been outstanding no matter how well the team's been playing it's 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 consistent and that's what this team desperately needs last thing on the devil's game um jimmy vc yeah what a, what a year for this guy <laughs> yeah i'm yeah he's uh he, he, you know my thoughts on him i always said like <laughs> the numbers everything the eye test I the mean, hype I'm, like I'm never stuck. matched and then yeah the hype around this kid i thought he was gonna be so damn good and you know he was drafted by nashville and the buffalo trades picks for him he decides not to sign there and it's Goes like to wow. the rangers and then ends up in buffalo anyway this dude did all of that just to and be toronto a- didn't work out like, and wasn't he in was he in vancouver for a little bit too or he was that... oh my god he was okay i, I want to make sure yes I... because he was there with like travis boyd remember that i okay i wasn't sure if if it was just travis boyd i thought the two no was... jimmy was there too 
but yeah no he's been all over the place and it's like wow the hype of this guy has just not been there at all but i mean he still does have skill uh so you know if you're using him in a bottom six role and you're not paying him much money then there's really no issue there and i think the devils are pretty happy with their Keep investment him on your third line and he's still chipping in and he's doing fine yeah he's definitely like rejuvenated this season comparatively to you know what happened the last two right so it's it's good to see him you know finally starting to get it back yeah um so tonight they play against chicago just as a little tiny preview um seth jones will not make his return is he not playing he tested positive for covid ah and it was this whole weird thing where they like they wouldn't comment on it and he like hid behind a curtain supposedly and interesting it was this whole weird thing but yeah no uh, no return for seth tonight unfortunately um if he was playing or not don't go to boo him don't boo him yeah i mean i don't really care either way and like here's the thing jake <laughs> we can lecture these people all we want a- any any blue jackets fan we can lecture them all we want about who we should or shouldn't boo people are going to spend the money and they're going to boo it's just, right it's fair just, I, i've come to accept that with this fan base yeah boo the hell out of panarin every time he touches the puck i don't <sighs> know he was as transparent as possible and he gave Ugh. us good years. Um, you know, some people were booing Bobrovsky again, don't know why. He was unbelievable for us. And yeah. It it's it's just how it is. You know, it depends on how things end. You know, they will this, this is a fan base that will never, ever, ever in a million years boo Cam Atkinson for good reason. But no matter mm-hmm. how reasonable a trade request is remember how badly we booed rick nash we booed freaking rick nash on our home ice several times i booed rick nash for because shoving bob i booed him for that but like i was pissed at him about that but beforehand people were booing him i'm like why like this dude gave us like what a decade over a decade of unbelievable production yeah. there's a, a reason a why he's our first team. number getting retired like yeah it was on a crap team because the organization sucked. They couldn't find a good GM. They couldn't find a good coach. Mm-hmm. And, you know, after a decade, believe it or not, Jake, it wore on him. Yeah. It happens. And people were like, I can't believe this. I can't believe he would do this. I'm like, what? Uh, you did it. Like, what do you mean you can't believe it? Like, this dude. Like, this was your fault. <laughs> this, this was exactly your fault, you know? Like, <laughs> And it's not like he left in free agency either. He got free, he requested a trade. You got assets out of it. I don't know. Yeah. Who in this freaking fan base sometimes. Why well, I don't know why anybody would boo Seth Jones. Are you kidding me? I'm going there tonight. I'm cheering the hell out of him. Thank you very much, A, for your service. And yeah. B, for this absurd haul we got for you. A, we don't have to spend $9.5 million over the next eight years on your ass. And B, we got Cole freaking Cylinder out of it. Adam Boakfist out of it. <laughs> another first round pick that's going to be very high out of it. Adam Boakfist, who's been unbelievable. Yeah. And we have a second round pick out of it that we flipped for Jake Bean. No, thank you so much, Seth. As a matter of fact, can I give you a kiss on the cheek? <laughs> I mean, it's going to be fun to see Caleb, at least. <laughs> I mean, is he? Pretty sure Caleb should be playing. I'd have to. That's kind of weird that like, I don't know why, because you, you'd, you'd imagine like, since they're both playing together, that they probably maybe be living together. Since he's because Caleb's young and yeah. he's not making time, maybe they might be living together. And if that's the case, I don't know. It's crazy that he doesn't have COVID. But that, that's fair. But yeah, I don't know. Um, it's going to be fun to watch Cat, the only respectable player on that team right now, other than maybe Dylan Strome. Yeah. And Brandon Hagel. <laughs> There's maybe like four guys. It's like, to break it, Strom, Hagel, and Flurry. And that's it. <laughs> oh God, Flurry! I adore him. I love. How could you not? How could you not love Mark Andre Flurry? Seriously, he's the best. Um, 
Okay, so this conversation I wanted to get to off the top of the hockey talk. Um, yeah. You mentioned Cole Sillinger, you know, being a 12th overall pick and the expectations for picks like that aren't necessarily the highest, right? At least not not immediately in terms of playing immediately. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before. I probably have. I find it so hilarious. Like, I hate this last draft. Screw you, Arizona Coyotes. It always comes back to the Coyotes for making <laughs> the most annoying draft ever because I can't remember if this guy is the 11th or 12th overall pick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You forfeit a fit because you, you, you were illegally scouting players and you still draft like shit. Okay. Tec- okay. I think technically he goes into the books as 12th. He goes into the books as 12th, but he was the 11th player. Selected. 11th player selected. Yeah. It's yeah. so weird. It's like, 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 why couldn't they just like eliminate it? Like, like instead of, Oh, 11th overall is forfeited. What? Like, just, just, just the first round had 31 picks. Just. Why not? Anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, you mentioned you know how those picks don't necessarily flourish right away unless there's usually like top three guys, right? Which sometimes even in the top three we didn't see that like with Kakanyemi and Strom. Yeah, I know. Guys get you can be like the second overall or third overall pick and get sent back and you know develop your game. I mean, look at this last draft. There's a reason that the first and second overall picks didn't playing. yeah it's there's not they're yeah. not good enough it's because they made the conscious choice to go back to college right and hilariously they both play for the same team <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah right <laughs> um but the point i'm trying to get to is liam foodie was 18th overall in 2018 i'm gonna see this kid i mean god like like we we said this, I he remember. got called up to the taxi squad. He hasn't played. He got sent right back down. He's. It's so weird because I he got called. I remember in the the nineteen twenties, we had so many freaking injuries. When I went to see the Blue Jackets up in Buffalo, because don't know if anybody knows here, go to school in Buffalo. Uh, I only talk about it all the time. Uh, who who would have thought, right? Yeah, who would have thought? This kid made, I think it was, it was either his NHL debut or his second game. Mm-hmm. He's, he had a point and he had an assist and he was just all over the ice. I was like, God, I'm really impressed with this kid. I like he's so fast. He this kid, he's fast. You know, he, he's making smart plays and then he comes into the bubble and he's playing. His play in the bubble was out of his freaking gourd. It was unbelievable because even when he wasn't scoring, he was just, he was creating things. He, he was noticeable every shift. And then he scores the backbreaking goal against the Maple Leafs in game five, the deciding game. I mean, and, that wasn't hard to do when it's Martin Marincin. <laughs> it was still, it's a bad angle shot though. I mean, he, he found it and you know he he deserved it at the he end came the flying through that right side and then just cut right on in and yeah <laughs> and the only thing that martin Rinchin knows how to do is press l1 but <laughs> yeah end, like you, you see it and even in the tampa series he was all over the place and i remember just being like i am so freaking excited for this kid yeah he, he was a london knight and you know how london knights churn out talent like what what is it with this kid it, it, it's not like his production in the minors is bad no. what maybe it's not what a situation of what is it with this kid what's their plan with him what, what how are what's they developing the, him yeah what's the what's the deal here what's the plan what's the, how when are we gonna see him make a full-time spot are we gonna see him make a full-time spot my personal opinion about this is he, you've got guys who i think are capable of playing bottom six minutes currently in the minors that's why i've got them under contract it you know they're essentially a certain insurance policy if you have injuries you know mm-hmm. um but god like i, I want to see this kid play. i mean you don't have one more of those guys but we'll get to him in a sec yeah if if your plan is we want to keep him in the minors to give him playing time, we want to play in the top six. I'm fine with that. That's what I said last, you know, episode about Yegor Chinnikov. I, I wouldn't mind seeing right. 
do that with him because I want to see that the more he plays, especially on North American ice, the, the more acclimated he gets, the more comfortable he feels, the, the better he develops. But yes. if that's what they're doing, that's fine. But what's the point of having him up on a taxi squad not playing games? Right, it's exactly. It's that it's, role. it's like him. they're it's like they're pulling a Justin Hall with this kid, and and I don't know why. It's not good. It's not good for him. It's not. I don't know how it it, it stunts the development of the player. And I really do like his game. I, I want to There's see a him lot of elements of like. <laughs> like there's, there's tools there with his game that you like. I, I, one, not only the speed of the kid do I like, it's the hustle too. This is yeah. an effort player. I like that about him. So this is a guy that I think is going to, in his NHL career, with his speed, his hustle ability, uh, the way that he forechecks, stuff like that. I think he's a guy who's going to be pretty effective defensively. If his offense isn't there, that's still fine if he's just going to be a middle six center. We but talked about this with Bemstrom last episode. We did. And I, and I said I keep him because his, his defense is so damn good that even if he's not providing offense, I, I still want him on the ice because right. he's responsible. Um, and we've seen I, Liam be responsible. Yeah. So, like, you know – I just don't know what the plan is. What do you do? What's can we? I wish we could just call up Yarmo ourselves and be like, "Hey, what are you doing? Like, like, what's 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 the plan with foods here? Like, in in a rebuild, the development of your players is kind of paramount. Yeah, and we and I said this last podcast too that in a rebuild, it's not so much you know trade, free agency drafting developing for four years down the line it's also a test of who you currently have in your organization it's tryout who's going to be here three four years down Mm -hmm. the line we discuss players we didn't discuss liam foodie he's young enough to stay he's young enough to stay you hope that you know especially with him being the 18th overall pick yeah he's going to be a player who is going to be here four years down the line you certainly hope that he's going to be a part of that when you expect to be good he's only a year younger than you like i would think he's yeah he's, he's a very young <laughs> kid so you know i i hope he's going to be a part of that but with the way that they're utilizing him i'm not sure what the plan is with him i don't know either and i hope we figure that out soon because i'm kind of sick of hearing about all these players in limbo yeah, that just and, aren't gonna be, you know, that were picked to be a part of this team that just haven't been. And here's the other thing for him, he's very fortunate because the expectations aren't going to be absurd with him. I think they're going to be pretty reasonable from this fan base as far if he's going to be a part of this franchise long term. He, he's not going to be a guy who's going to be relied on to be uh a a key contributor at least offensively because if you're looking down the middle if your long-term plan is this guy's going to play center well you also have a long-term plan of playing kent johnson at center and cole sillinger those are the two guys you're relying on for the offense. so you know it doesn't matter who's one or two in terms of that you know kent johnson one or cole sillinger two he could be three doesn't matter that's what he has to be Liam Foodie could easily be a, a number three center of the national. Yeah, with his speed with his, his defense. Yeah, so that that's all we need. I just want to see him develop his offensive game a little bit to where um, he's he not a stick. Riley Nash yeah. two point oh. You know what yeah. I mean? So you know this is a guy who's going to be an NHL player, no doubt about it. Um, the, the the talent at least is there. You know, defensively and other you know uh key attributes as well i just want to see him develop his offense enough to where he's effective in a third line role Mm -hmm. i don't know how he does that though if he's not playing games i mean the the simple answer is he doesn't (laughs) it's like (laughs) there's only so much you learn uh you know playing over at the ice house there's only so much you learn sitting in the press box Exactly. So, 
I, I, I'd like to see that be clarified because I know that the taxi squad has allowed teams to bring players up and keep players ready and available in case a player gets hurt or practicing, making sure they're fresh. Yeah. I'm totally okay with that, but I feel like there's other guys who you're not relying on to develop their games who are available, who you can use in that role, allowing your younger guys maybe to go to the minors, get time there, play, flourish. Right. Uh, that's, that's just a complaint that I have because I'm not sure the direction that they, they have with it because it's not like it would be one thing if you're just keeping the best players up because you're a competing team, you're trying to make the playoffs. And it's yes, one thing exactly. If you, if you have a Liam Foody in your system and you're the Pittsburgh Penguins and you're keeping him up because we may need him a night. And, and even though he's not playing, we're fine with this because we want to have him available in the bottom six if anybody get, comes down with COVID or gets hurt. But it's another thing when you're a rebuilding team who's not competitive to be doing it. Yeah, it's just – it's a strange decision and I want to know maybe they bring him up closer towards the end of the season just to see what he can do again. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's like, definitely an option as, as and it, it could happen depending on what they do at the trade deadline. We, that we too. About, yes. We talked about Domi could be someone that they deal. I hope they keep him. I hope that they sign him. We did just but, talk about that. We want to but, keep Max for sure. If they make the decision not to do that, though, that frees up a spot. Yeah. Um, there's technically a spot filled up uh, because Gregory yeah. Hoffman is. This was a strange. Uh, yeah, he got suspended by the team. Mm -hmm. uh, th I guess they're still going to hold his contract technically mm -hmm. for a little bit, but the process is he's going to go back to Switzerland. Um, there's no bad blood. Mm -hmm. Thank God. It's all personal reasons for him. He wants to go back home and. Yeah. You know. it, it's unfortunate. So what I, what I essentially got out of that is the, the exact way that you described it, it, it. We have the same read of there's nothing bad going on between organization and player. It's not like a, uh, who is, who is the Patrick Bergel and Buffalo Sabres. Oof. <laughs> It's not like one of those. This is just a guy who there's something clearly going on and he feels the need to go back to Switzerland. Um, and it sounds to me like the Blue Jackets were fine with that and they were going to allow him to do it. But the stay and how long he's going to be in Switzerland is indefinite and we don't know. It's going to be right. a lot longer than first expected. And as a result, the Blue Jackets don't really have a choice. They have to suspend him for it. Which is unfortunate. I thought the wording was strange. Yeah, I thought it was too. I thought because... like, you know, because suspension implies one thing. Termination implies another. Um, alone implies something completely different. Yeah, it, it was weird because the tone of it was was hard to identify because it didn't sound like Yarmo was mad or upset or anything like that. But at the same time, he was like, yeah, but we we have no choice but just to. Yeah, to I I, like, I read Portsline's article, or I read like the headline for it, and it sound and it looked really harsh. And I saw one of our old friends, William Espy, talking to him about it, where he was like, "This is pretty misleading the way this reads." Yeah, it it re it reads very very strange. Where it's like, yeah, he's going through something. I totally understand it. We're there for him. He's got a wife and kid at home. He needs to worry about that. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's it's funny because you you know we called him a rookie he's 28 29 years old yeah he's one of the oldest rookies in the national hockey league because he you know that he was what a fourth round pick in 2011 of carolina and he just kind of stayed overseas but they always kept his rights for some reason yeah and then the blue jackets trade a seventh round pick for his rights hoping like hey this guy can contribute in the bottom six and and he did he contributed in the top six fine. for a little bit there too was he was like, fine i mean you know i'm not upset about it because the chances that that seventh round pick becomes more valuable than what we got out of gregory hoffman isn't absurdly high so there's you know, i don't like i don't think this seventh rounder is going to turn into henrik lundqvist everybody i don't know maybe let's not say that it is carolina uh <laughs> but yeah like you know 
it, it's it's a weird situation. It is what it is, though. Like, sure, it sucks that you did give up an asset for him, but it's not like mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. a, a large asset. It was a setup. right. It, it's magic beans, and it's not even like the great magic beans. It's like the leftover magic beans that you know everybody else got their fair share and picked what they want, and you're just hoping that people overlooked this certain kind of magic bean. But you know, you know what it is. Not going to be anything significant. You know what it is. What? It's an earthworm birdie bots bean. <laughs> a what? Earthworm birdie bots bean. Harry I... Potter, dude. A t- Bir- birdie oh, bots every flavor beans. That is so <laughs> tough of you to do. I I've never seen a second of Harry Potter. Oh god damn it! Yeah. <laughs> I see. I love this because we do a podcast and we and we always like talk about this. Isn't just a hockey podcast? It's also pop culture, which I agree with. But it's hilarious that you do a pop culture slash hockey podcast with the guy who's not very cultured in pop culture. I think mean, that's why it was my minor. I'm here to help you. <laughs> True. I'll help out with the music aspect. You know. <laughs> with the weekend simply. The movies and TV aspect. The one thing that we're connected on is hockey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I went, remember when I went to uh, Universal and like it took us forever to find mm-hmm. Diagon Alley and everything. And yeah. my brother and I ended up actually getting Birdie Bots beans. And oh, that's very cool. It was fun. I'll be there this weekend. Yeah, you have fun with that. Yeah, that's nice. I'll nice. have to wait. Are you going to Universal? Yep, we're staying there. Staying at uh, Bayside. Nice. I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to show you the secret to finding Hogwarts. Then <laughs> sounds good. I love it there. Um, we're going to Magic Kingdom and Epcot for a day. Nice, nice. We have some drinks in Mexico and some other countries that have. Hell yeah. yeah! Some uh, some freedom fries. Yeah, free in France. Fries. <laughs> oh god, yeah, they're so good. It's so, <laughs> so many good places at Epcot. Like you don't really truly some poutine, Epcot. dude. You got to get some poutine in Canada. <laughs> I never thought about that. I've never actually tried poutine, but it always looks like something I probably. I know. Get. I think I would really like. You know what? That's Just because convers- of the ingredients. You know. Yeah, that's a conversation for later. Um... <laughs> <laughs> We're always getting backtracked on this podcast. I know, I know. That's just how we are, right? We're just we're just two dudes that chit chat. Um, here's a tough one. So the Sharks finally terminated Evander Kane's contract. Yeah. So this was... took them long enough, and I mean the PA is going to step in and do their thing. Yeah, it's it's more so a precedent thing than anything as far as the play. Make sure the process runs correctly essentially right exactly. but i mean it sounds like he's not going to be out of work very long well because um apparently the oilers and ken holland held a presser this morning and they he didn't say they don't have interest he basically confirmed that there might be some interest in it. And, and here's the uh, his the, quote was i believe in second chances yes and this isn't a second chance. This yeah, no, like a- we've talked about this. I saw, I don't know, I told you to follow her. One of my friends, Sam on Twitter, had like a tweet earlier today where she was just like, when you don't know how to correct, uh, when you don't know how to count correctly. And it was just the quote tweet of that, him being like, I believe in second chances. And it's just like, yeah, second. Uh, right. No, th- we, we've talked at length about this guy what he's done in the past um who he is as a person everything like that but yeah we can have a very candid conversation here today um hockey is certainly not a place of moral absolutism we've had that conversation way too many times and we're gonna have it way more as the you know as the show progresses and grows yeah so while the the gut reaction for the average person who looks at the situation with <laughs> the situation with the Vander Kane, the multiple situations with the Vander Kane, the 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 storyline that is a Vander Kane. Yes, the, the the general gut reaction would be he does not deserve another chance in the National Hockey League. But 
remember, first of all, this is the National Hockey League. Yes. And second of all, this is Evander Kane. Evander so, Kane is still a very good still player. He's a you know, successful, skilled player. But I don't want to see him return. Personally, I do not want to see him back. <laughs> personally, I don't need to see him again, but we're going to. And it's not like we don't know why. It's because he's a good player. There's a right. reason we haven't seen Jake Vertanen or Brendan Leipzig again. It's not because teams took a hard stance against what they did. It's Correct. because they're marginal players. Yeah, it, pretty much. Yeah, and it's the same. The same could be said for coaches, like you know, yeah. um, Bill Peters. There's yeah. a reason there. He was a very middling to not great coach, and then we found out mm. his receipts that he never, you know, apologized yeah. for. And then he goes to the KHL and doesn't succeed there, and ends up <laughs> losing his job there, and. Yeah, because he's just not really that good of a coach. Um, that and so, Evander Kane. This is a guy who, in a bad year, in eighty-two games, is going to get you at least twenty goals and fifty points. Yes. Uh, Vegas apparently oh, put a guy on unconditional waivers, so maybe they're in the hunt for him too. But like, they're always in the hunt for people. Yeah. Here's the interesting thing, though. As far as far as the Oilers are concerned, so, someone's yes. sign this guy. The reason I don't like it for the Oilers is not just the obvious reasons. You know, the, the personality, the baggage, everything like that. Mm-hmm. The reason I don't like it for the Oilers is because it's a situation where I'm looking at them and I'm just like, they're already in enough turmoil as it is right now, aren't they? Like, yeah, it's a with the losing streak that they're on and yeah. losing and Connor to COVID protocols right now. Um, I just think it's a not general... finding the right fit in goaltending and defense with the stuff that's going on with Dave Tippett and what he's saying. We, just... We've talked about this before. Like, the forwards aren't the problem. That's that, that's exactly what I was about to say. It's just. It's a lack of understanding of your roster. I'm sitting oh, here. Just, yeah. Like, sure. Like, yeah. You know, Evander Kane's really going to fix the Edmonton Oilers problem of high end scoring. I don't. That's no. Yeah. That's, no, that's not an issue. It's the depth scoring as well as defense and goaltending. Yeah. Last time I checked, Evander Kane is not a defenseman. Last time right. I checked. Evander Kane is not a goaltender. Less he's not time. a bottom six forward. He's not a bottom six forward. Um, so what the hell is he gonna do? It's sure, like where do you fit forward. where do you fit him if you've already got like where does he normally play on the right? So he can play left or right. I mean you can play, play either. Right. Okay. So what are you gonna oh. do if you have Zach Hyman, if you have Yessi Pogliarvi, Kyler Yamamoto, uh, you know, if you're putting if you're still putting Nuge on the wings. Which, is the goal just to, to keep the <laughs> line of, you know, Dreisaitl, McDavid, and um, Nuge. Hyman together and then put Nuge with Kane and Puyarvi? I mean, that's a really good top six, man. I mean, I, but, like, the problem is, is, like, I'm just – and this isn't Evander Kane's fault. I, I just don't like it because it doesn't make sense from a roster construction standpoint because it's not a sustainable way of winning hockey games. If you add a Vander Kane to your roster, you are saying we feel the risk of who he is as a okay, person. Okay. The potential Jake? to buy him in the locker room is worth a play style of trying to win ho- every hockey game six to five. Jay, I need you to remember this is Ken Holland Ken we're Holland. dealing with. <laughs> Yeah. This is Ken Holland. He ran the Red Wings dynasty and he's still trying to run the Red Wings dynasty. Just that's in Edmonton. That's the thing about eras, man. <laughs> Ken Holland had a, an unbelievable career. Unbelievable career. He helped the Red Wings build that dynasty. He is an instrumental part of it. Yeah. But at the same time, two statements can be true at the same time. We've talked about that many times. People tend to forget that. 
Ken Holland absolutely helped that whole dynasty, one of the best dynasties we've ever seen in the National right. Hockey League. At the same time, he's also a fossil who ran that dynasty into the ground towards the end <laughs> and is now completely screwing with a roster that has Connor frickin' McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl on it. You've got two top three players, two, two top three forwards in the National Hockey League on your roster. And you're not doing a damn thing and you're with not him. doing a damn thing with it because you're relying on a 39 year old mike smith Ugh. who you gave a two-year ex- uh, extension to and a 33 year old miko koskinen, koskinen who can't who put it together never been good and you gave him you know that wasn't his fault that was it that was that was that was, that was, that was shirelli yeah but like still like so he inherited that bad contract but st- he still kept him around yeah like and then, oh, the, the, the wonders of trading for Duncan Keith. Cody CC. The Cody CC contract. I mean, God. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I don't know what you do, man. I, I... The one thing I'll give him credit for, the one thing I'll give him credit for, <laughs> is he did not hilariously overpay in an extension the way I thought he would to Tyson Berry. Right. Yeah. Tyson's contract is still pretty good. That that's a reasonable contract for what Tyson Berry does. I thought he was going to give him a a hilarious contract. (laughs) I was so ready to laugh. I was so disappointed when I saw that contract. I was like, Oh, this is reasonable. (laughs) Well, that, well, that money went to dunks, right? (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes that's fair but you know what in this in this circumstance i think oilers fans would much rather they just overpay for tyson Berry than have to deal with duncan key <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i don't know what you do i don't know what holland does i don't know what evander does we'll find out evander i don't know if here's the thing do you know who's a team i think should take a shot on him if, if, if in terms of the interest for for trying to succeed, I don't think any team should take a shot on him personally. But well, for the yeah, that, that, that's a personal opinion. But I'm I'm not naive enough that I don't. And understand. you and I totally agree on that opinion. <laughs> I know, you know, you look at the baggage and everything like that. If there's any organization that can, can turn that around, or at least not just- not turn it around, but keep it zipped. Mm-hmm. for six months mm-hmm. as they try to compete for a title god i think that the pittsburgh penguins should look at him oh dear god and let me tell you why i'm sorry evander kane if you can't get it figured out around Sidney crosby ron hextel brian Mateo. burke Brian Burr, Mario and <laughs> Lemieux is in there. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't get it figured out there, it's a wrap. Sorry. Get it figured yeah. out, man. I mean, you, you just, yeah. seriously. Sidney Crosby, Chris Letang, Ron Hextall, Mario Lemieux, Evgeny Malkin. Brian, Brian fucking Ross. Burke. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 Jake Gensel. They just got. They got. It's a. It's a world class organization. Yes. They might be in terms of not just how they 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 handle you know most situations because it's a very drama free environment. They for the most won part several championships. They've been great for such a long time. They're probably the closest thing in hockey we have to the New England Patriots. Even as a small market franchise, yeah, air quotes. You know, like yeah, because like who else? Who else do we have that's that's close to the Patriots in terms of hockey? Because because nobody's going to touch what the Patriots are. But in terms of just mo- model organization, in terms of model organization, yes, for a long period of time, you know, a star who's there for a long period of time who doesn't really say anything. Who doesn't like say, yeah, culture, right. A great culture. Like, like, cause you, you, you're sure shit aren't going to, sure shit, not the Blackhawks. Um, you have bits and pieces of that from franchises around the place, but you don't have all of that, 
you know, yeah. together. Except for the only other organization that I would say is close to them would be Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay doesn't need them. Tampa Bay, no. it, would it would be stupid for them to sign. They, they literally don't, they, they don't need them. <laughs> no. I don't know where they would put them. Put him with Corey Perry. <laughs> How fun would that be? I mean, yeah, like Tampa Bay doesn't need him. And I'm not saying that Pittsburgh needs him, but I, Pittsburgh's in a position. Pittsburgh would help him is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. So Tampa Bay doesn't need him. They've won back-to-back Stanley Cups. They're fine as they're constructed. Yeah. The Penguins, think about it. Since they won back-to-back Stanley Cups, they finally lost to the Capitals, and since then they haven't won a playoff series. Right. Swept by the Islanders, lost in four to Montreal in the bubble. Lost and to then the Isles again. The again. So they're still a very good team. Yeah. They're one of the hottest teams in the league. They certainly don't have problems scoring, but they have had some injuries. I think it would be a fine fit for him. I think it would work. I mean, I think it's the best situation for him to go, but the problem is, is they are such a model organization. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't offer him because of it. Because of, yes, I can see that as well. But only one way to find out, and that's to wait it out, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway. But one, one quick thing that I will say. Uh, wrap, yeah, wrap the wrap stuff up. up. Um, do you know who is kind of a winner in all of the bad stuff has happened is San Jose. Whew, they get to breathe a heavy yes. sigh of relief that they get out of the contract. Because this is a long-term contract. He was going to be aging and his production was going to taper. And that's already on That was going to weigh their cap down really, really bad. So a team that's that's got some rough contracts. So you think about the Eric Carlson contract, the Brent Burns contract. Mm-hmm. They have to make a decision on uh, what they're going to give Tomas Hurdle if they're going to give him an extension. Yes, they do. This helps them out significantly. It's really unfortunate it, it how it's free happened. If they want to keep Hurdle, you know, they – They've got freed up space now. They freed up space if they decide not to, if they want to go full in a rebuild. God, could you imagine what they're going to get for that guy? <laughs> they're going to get a lot for Thomas. Lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's well, ultimately it. It's unfortunate what has happened because I never want to see any form of injustice anywhere. And what he has done has been um, nothing short. So, yeah, nothing short. You know, the way that he's treated people and, and done things in the past but the, the one he's treated positive, himself even like yeah know. yeah absolutely the one positive that the sharks do get out of it is they get out of that contract which is yes at least at least good for them as they rebuild mm-hmm. uh matt grizzly had himself a night last night He's God. He's one of the more underrated players in the league. We, we don't I love matt grizzly can i just say players. that like yeah. i love the name I love it. I love it. He's definitely, definitely slept on in terms of, of what he can do. Yeah. Um, Five points against Washington, dude. Yeah. God, they really, they took it to him last night. (laughs) So real quick. Matt Grizzlick's war percentage is 87%. His defense is at 92%. His offense is at 85%. Ah. Only area he struggles with is he takes a lot more penalties than he draws, and his finishing percentage isn't high. But, I mean, you'll have that. You know, yeah, and yeah, exactly. But everything else, man, God, he's he's really one very, of the very, very serviceable, and it, he looks good with Charlie. <laughs> yeah, Charlie can make anybody. Look Charlie good. can make anybody look pretty good. <laughs> he's good on his own too. Absolutely. You know, it's not, it's like, not like yeah. it's not like Justin Hall when he played with Jake Muzzin, where Hall, where Muzzin was keeping him afloat. No, he, he's, yeah, and he, then he dropped to play with. I mean, Justin can still play with Dermy too. Like that's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Grizz is just fun and yeah. Have yourself a night, bud. <laughs> yeah. Five points against five points against anybody is hard, but for a defenseman really getting five points team. against Washington, yeah. Whoo! Uh, another thing on the Bruins, uh, it's official. Tuka's it back. Official. 
the um, worst kept secret in hockey uh, is, has officially come. Um, and it comes at a perfect time, too, because now that the taxi squads are back in, the Bruins won't have a, any problems having three goalies on the roster. Right, yeah. That's actually so that a kind, really good point. So that kind of worked out perfectly for them. <laughs> um, one year, million dollars. I mean, that's what more can you ask for? Exactly. Yeah, God, you get a really a damn good goalie with a ton of experience. Um, at, you at get that. a franchise cornerstone back. Yeah. You know, and, and this is something that, you know, we've, we've talked about. We knew that this was going to happen. This is a guy who loves his family, kind of wanted to spend some time away, spend some time with his family. And the fans and, hated him for it for whatever fucking yeah. reason. Because it's, it's, it's Boston. It's just how they are. Yeah. But I'm happy for him because I think this is a smart decision. This is very similar to what uh, Mike Fisher did with the Predators, where he yes. signed at the halfway point of the season. It allowed, it gave him enough time to get ready for the playoffs, but he was in better shape. He was healthier, not as banged up for by the time that uh, the playoffs began. Olmark and Swayman have done well enough to keep the Bruins afloat. Mm -hmm. Rass just has to come in, get ready for the playoffs, and hopefully by then, you know, he'll be in, in, in good shape. He'll be in playing shape. And he won't have had the, the wear and tear on his body throughout the course of the season. And hopefully he, he can make that run and win that title. It, his first Stanley Cup as a starting goalie. Because he yes. does have the one ring. But I've always wanted to see. He's got the ring. He needs the actual win. He needs, yes. I, I want to see him win a Stanley Cup, win that ring as the starting goalie. Because he's one of the best goalies we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. in our lifetime yeah yeah he's super underappreciated and just just an overall great guy too that presser still makes me laugh when he called the audible on the bench everybody oh, called yeah. the audible when it was time yeah i just watched that video too <laughs> i still i remember watching that game with my buddy bryant who's a bruins fan and he was just like looking up he was like uh he was like, he was like, <laughs> is there a penalty and i was like i don't know i'll see it. i don't see anybody with their arm up and he was like what's he doing get back in the net <laughs> he's freaking out and then he saw him skate back he was like what the hell was that you hear him go it's tied it's tied yeah that one was um you know, even even the great ones have brain farts from time to time oh yeah luckily it didn't cost them Speaking of a great one coming back, uh, I am score. Yeah. I am score. Yeah. It's about damn time, Gino. Yeah, I actually didn't think that that's where you were going to go with this. No? I thought you were going with, with another thing that happened today, but um, oh. definitely very excited for Gino to come back. He's one of the more fun players to watch in the NHL. Absolutely. Unbelievable career. Um. No, I, th- I thought you were going to go in the direction of uh, Nicholas Lidstrom. Oh, we can talk about that. Let's, yes, let's mention that really quick. I love that because, I mean, he's, God. What happened exactly? Uh, he was named Vice President of Hockey Ops, I believe. For Vice Detroit, President. of course. For Detroit, yeah. So, and everybody was freaking out about it because, I mean, Nicholas Lidstrom was unbelievable. What a freaking career that guy had. One of the best defensemen of all time. Um, the, I think, yeah. I, one I of think the, yeah. Possibly you, defenseman of all time. You hit it right on the head there. You didn't even need to say for Detroit. It's just all, all time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, you know, we talked about Ken Holland and his reign as emperor of detroit like nicholas was instrumental in that exactly so yeah steve eiserman today announced that the team has hired nicholas from as vice president of hockey operations so everybody's freaking out about him can you just imagine now that you have two of the greatest red wings of all time just running your team exactly and they're very very progressive hockey minds too they're they're doing a believable job he said 
It's been on my mind for a little bit of time. I wanted to get back and get involved with hockey again, especially with the Wings. And when the opportunity presented itself, I thought it was really good time for me and my family. So I'm really excited. Congrats, Nicholas. And then the Red Wings tweeted the perfect resume, the list of this guy's career accomplishments. Dude, it's... (laughs) All with Detroit. Six seasons as captain. His number five got retired. Hockey Hall of Fame in 2015, four-time Stanley Cup champion, 2002 Conn Smythe Trophy Award winner, seven-time Norris Trophy winner, <laughs> 12-time <laughs> NHL All-Star, highest-scoring defenseman in franchise history with, oh, with 1,142 points. Oh, Did that in 1,564 games. That's as a defenseman! He never missed the playoffs. Remember, he played in 20 seasons. Right. He never missed the playoffs. Uh, member of the exclusive Triple Gold Club, <laughs> Red Red Wings Vice President of Hockey Operator. It just in an ungodly career. Can you not think of a more decorated player to, you know, run an organization that he's been with his essentially his whole life? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's you know not quite there, but it's as close as we've gotten. I think in hockey history to seeing someone get a significant role with a team to the role that Mario Lemieux has with the Penguins. It's the closest thing. It's the closest thing. For sure. Um, and it's unbelievable. It's too, too unbelievable. Mario I mean, Lemieux. you know, we see, we see former players get hired as general managers. Like, you know, like Joe Sackick in Colorado. Sackick, uh, you know. Stevie Y. Yeah. Um, Bergevin, mm-hmm. which I don't know if we want to talk about Bergevin. Yeah, I mean, he got a job with the Kings, but we we we, we talked about that before. That it, that seemed like another one of the worst kept secrets in hockey that he was going to end up in LA eventually. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he's back with Phil, which is kind of fun. Yeah, that's all there really is to it. I don't think it's significant news to be honest. Because well, like... it could turn into significant news. I doubt it because Rob Blake said he wants to stay. So <laughs> Rob Blake, another example. Rob another, Blake. yeah. Luke Robotai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. No, no, we've seen several like really great players go into executive the roles, executive and, yeah. playing. You know, either in in hockey operations or, or, or as GM have success <laughs> jd but, yeah gotta but, give a shout out to our guy JD. <laughs> gotta love jd but this one just i don't know this one just this one oh, feels really special just feels right really, yeah, that's how it yeah it feels even more special than sackick in colorado or blake in la or uh you know, you know think of any example this one just feels so right e- even more than stevie y in in detroit to be mm-hmm. honest with you just, well, because like we figured sooner rather than later, Stevie was gonna come home. And uh, yeah, that was an, another one of the worst kept secrets. <laughs> this dude was eventually, whenever he left the Lightning, he was immediately gonna get the Red Wings job. Yeah, like, but this is just—it's it, nice. It's fuzzy, right? Yeah. It's like it. I wouldn't put it on the um, on the red level of story of feel good story but still it's a nice feel good story and uh, yeah and it's just awesome to see him back in hockey because we haven't really heard much from him ever since he's retired and right. he's one of the best it just play not, not only best players in terms of unbelievable player but one of the best people in hockey absolutely he is so respected by everybody on the ice mm-hmm. he's one of those guys that you don't chirp I would love to. What was going to say? Brad Marchand w- wouldn't even think about chirping. Trent <laughs> you know? Frederick. Imagine Trent Frederick trying to chirp Nick Lindstrom. Yeah, like like there's some <laughs> players you respect so much, like, like but like players still chirp Crosby. Nobody ever chirped Nicholas Lindstrom. Right. <laughs> everybody just it, it was just one of those unspoken things, you know. It's just awesome. I'm so happy to see him back in hockey, man. Absolutely. Good, yeah, it's a really good thing. Um, speaking of another really good thing, um, boys out of your school's town. Yeah. 
Jack Quinn debuts tonight. I'm excited to see that. I might I might tune in to, to see how he plays. Um, tough task, you know. They're only playing the Tampa Bay Lightning, uh, <laughs> but but Good I luck, did go, kid. <laughs> I did see Sabers play the Lightning earlier this year, and they beat them. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, the, well, weren't the Lightning also shorthanded like Braden Point, and Nikita Kucherov, and like really integral guys? Counterpoint. They're still Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> They're still the Tampa Bay Lightning. You're not wrong. Yes, and Brian Elliott was starting, but still, let me have oh, my Oh, God. Fun. Let me have my fun. It was, it was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Jack, man. We beat the Boltless Lightning. <laughs> we beat the Boltless Lightning. <laughs> we beat the Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> We beat the Thunder without Russell Westbrook or Kevin Durant <laughs> or James Harden <laughs> or Jibaka. Good luck, Jack. Tall task, but I hope he does well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got another coach fine for, like, how many times are we going to see this and how many times okay. is it not going to get old to talk about? Because, like, we see Rod do it all the time, and mm-hmm. it's fun every time, right? This one might be one of the ones. There's very often where I'm just like, <laughs> you got to keep your emotions in check. Like, like, what are you doing here? I have no, like, I have no. Well, let's just go ahead. Okay, Rick Bonus. Whatsoever with the stars. And I felt genuine anger from watching that because really? I was like, that is so egregious. The ending to that game. I don't know how, like, I know that the, the, the Blues the blue scored to take the lead with, like, 35 seconds left after they tied it with, like, 50 seconds left. It was That crazy. took 18 seconds. Yeah. It happened. It was so, wild. I, I can't believe he waited until after the final horn and until most of the players cleared off the bench to show that frustration. I would have been on the ice after that after that time goal. Do you remember? That was so freaking ridiculous! Oh my god! Do you remember um, two two things I want you to try to remember? When like Rod was looking at a video replay and then he looked up all confused, just like Rrr. yeah. Like, do you remember just that mm-hmm. look on his face? Yeah, I think of that, and then I think of Sheldon Keefe. Yelling, fuck you, Grant. <laughs> I also, I think of Torts, this was several years ago, I think of Torts in Montreal when he was literally on the ice after the oh, game yeah. in overtime, just screaming at them about the freaking penalty that they called. That one was hilarious. Like, like, I almost think he didn't show enough emotion there. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Rick? Like damn, Rick. Like no, that no, man. You that that was a worthwhile suspension, man. Yeah, twenty five thousand dollars. Give it to him. Are you kidding hey. me? What the fuck was that? I mean, <laughs> that was as egregiously bad as it's ever gonna get. Well, we, okay, we saw that with <clears throat> we saw that with Tortorella, something mm-hmm. very similar when he went on his rant after Corpy went down a couple years ago. Yeah. He got the 20,000 and then he got a tentative 25 for if he said anything through the calendar year of 2020. Yeah. So it was like a max of $45,000. It was so frustrating. Like, I was at that game <laughs> and I remember just, I was so confused about it. And I was listening to it on like the radio, like on the way home. And I was yeah, like, yeah, and we're all going, he's right. Because you lost a point. You know, because you ended up having to go to a shootout and you ended up losing, but also you lost your goalie. But you lost your goal in a shootout that shouldn't have happened. Exactly, because Moransky won the game, but because they managed the clock so poorly. Like I just, oh my god, this fucking league just need just get it the fuck together, man. Can we equate this to one more Columbus thing? Because the yeah. the offside with Trocheck. Oh my god! Yeah. The offside with Vinny Trocek. And they didn't take the goal away. 
they didn't take the goal away, but they were just like, we're going to take away the rest of the penalty. Like, thanks. Like, thanks that helps. Like, yeah. Dumb. That makes us Appreciate feel so it. much fucking better. Yeah, no. we. Th- thank you. Thank you, you know, for, for making life so much more convenient on us. Mm. Appreciate you. And they did it, like, during the intermission, which was weird. Yeah. That pissed me off that they did it. Like, I, I wanted them to keep the penalty. I understand. Uh, okay. If you're going to, like, shit everywhere, at least sit in your shit. Don't get it half right. Don't get it half yeah. wrong. It's just Don't stain the carpet, but clean up the rest of it and keep it smelling. Sit in your bed and lie in it. Like, if you made your bed, lie in it, right? Shit in your bed, lie in it. <laughs> shit in your bed, lie in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what they did. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, they shit in the bed. <laughs> no, they didn't wash the sheets. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's what happened here in Dallas, too. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I don't get oh. God, they really just mm, the how many conversations on officiating have we had with this show? Not as many as I thought we would, but still. Yeah, man. Like mm. I, I think it's <laughs> I I usually maintain in sports I don't generally like officiating as an excuse for a loss. Mm-hmm. I usually mm-hmm. am of the opinion if you play well enough, you should be able to overcome officiating in most circumstances. Yes. There are your rare instances. That would be one of them. Where the refs are like fixing it? Yes. <laughs> God, you would think. <laughs> you would actually legitimately look at that and be like, there has to be something going on here, right? Like, I, th- I think... Uh... Did, did Wes bet on this? <laughs> right. It's like, it, here's the thing. Wait, it, did Wes McCulley even manage that game? He, like, I love it. Like, like people know. Like, can that, you uh, can you look up the officials for that game really fast? I, I don't know who's the officials for that game. I'll tell you this, Jake, right now. If there wasn't a fix on that game, that's almost worse. <laughs> speaking of, speaking, speaking incompetent- of comparisons and fix, Tim Peel. The makeup calls. Yeah. Makeup call on Mike. Wait, there's another. Uh, Throw that in the pile. We we talked about that. that We've talked about this several times, but that is just the the NHL being like, we're taking a a hard stand here. This is this is unacceptable. He will never ref in a game again. And it's like, yes, way to throw him under the bus as the bad apple when you're looking at the rest of your staff who are just doing the same thing that he does. They're not mic'd up bravo colin campbell thanks for that word soup god and then and then the what who was the other one um campbell's word soup my least favorite (laughs) i like campbell (laughs) i like campbell soup yeah and then what was the other one what was the not very good though there's one more that i really wanted to bring up that was similar to this um I can't remember his name, but it was Vegas Montreal. Oh God, we talked about that too. I can't remember what his. I can't his, remember his name. But that but one was. That one was just so bad because Braden McNabb punching Nick Suzuki right in front of his fucking face. Yeah. And then, like, the run the clock thing was funny to. Chris watch. Lee. Chris Lee. That's yes. Yeah. This was funny to watch. Mm-hmm. You can see me doing the round the clock thing. It's funny so long. You know, I'm going to quote Dave Chappelle here. You know, <laughs> sometimes the funniest things, the, the, the meanest things in life are funny. You got to remember, I'm not saying it to be mean. I'm saying it because it's funny. And everything is funny until it happens to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You watch that, and I can laugh about it. But God, if that happened to the Blue Jackets, there'd be a hole in that wall. Oh yeah, <laughs> the cannon would actually fire a cannonball right through the wall. Yes, yeah. I, I would hope that someone would put an actual cannonball and shoot it at one of the refs <laughs> for that kind of a performance. Oh man, maybe not at the ref, but close enough that it's like a warning shot. Yeah, um, like they did with baseballs. 
<laughs> uh, the All Star Game captains got named. Oh, did it? I didn't even see it. Or at least the coaches did. I know the coaches Enlighten. did. Uh, Pete DeBoer is going to coach the Pacific. Fair enough. Central. Shit. I can't remember the Central off the top of my head. Uh, let me see if I can I actually. Eichel, uh, Malkin, Lidstrom. All star rosters selected by NHL.com. Oh my God. Uh, bear with me. Talk for a minute. Should be. Uh... I don't know if it is, but I think it probably should be Bednar. Bednar, yes, it is Bednar. Oh, yeah. Okay, I got it. I got it. So Pacific, Pete DeBoer. Mm-hmm. Central, Jared Bednar. Is Atlantic John Cooper? No. Who is it? The Atlantic is Andrew Burnett. Really? The coach of the Panthers. <laughs> I mean, I, I, he just kind of got there. So I, he, he did I, just kind of get there, but they've been unbelievable. Yeah, sure. And Fair then, enough. I mean, Rod Brindamore. I mean, yeah, worst kept secret ever. Because Rod the Bot is fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I want to see him play. Can they have like an all star alumni game? God, that'd be sick. I just want to see Rod Brindamore out there. You know what I miss? I miss the uh, the alumni games that they did for the Winter Classic. I remember, yeah. I remember watching Penguins Capitals was was a very interesting one when they had Mario out in the ice and mm-hmm. uh, and several other Penguins legends. Uh, yeah, I wish they would do do, do more alumni games and stuff like that because I think that those are interesting, fun, lighthearted moments for the fans. Yeah, they get to see former players that they loved. Yeah, that they you know, still love. Players- that a significant portion of your audience grew up on. Yeah. And even if, you know... You and and you get the younger young. audience into the history of it, too. Exactly. You bring them into the history, and you can see, like, God, this guy had an unbelievable career with, you know, this team or that team. And, you know, it, it, it's really cool. I, I wish that they would do... It's a nice teaching moment for the younger audience. The older audience gets to see people they grew up with watching exactly. you get the nostalgia from it are they even going to play an all-star game because i know vegas has nice jerseys for it they went back to just putting the nhl logo on the crest which is kind of nice where um where's the all-star game supposed to be vegas okay so it is in vegas okay um it's vegas they put on a show i'd have to imagine the nhl is going to do everything they can to make sure the all-star game happens should be especially coming up in the next couple of weeks, though, right? Like, because yeah, that's normally when they try to play it is in the January. Yeah. So, especially since the fact that they're not going to be doing the Olympics, I think they're going to push hard to make sure that this happens. Maybe scooch it into the beginning of February if they want. Potentially, to. I think that that would be a good way to go about it. If you want to make sure that the players are going to be able to stay safe and uh, not test positive and stuff like that, stay you know, safe. You need to reschedule more games because I'm pretty sure they're at over 100. They're last time I checked, it was 104 games postponed. Yeah, congratulations to the NHL getting into double digits or triple digits, century mark, century mark, baby. Um, but yeah, I, I hope this all star game is good. I hope the skills competition is a lot better this year. I hope they don't bring back the plastic accuracy shooting because that was stupid. Yeah, that was weird. No, I like the I just like the old way that they did the uh, paper targets in the corners, man. Yeah, like that's all you need. Four paper Heard targets. Shot. In... What was with can can I say one more thing on the accuracy shooting? Why would you put one in the fucking center? Yeah, well, it's because, like, I don't... Why not, are you shooting at a goalie's chest? Yeah, you're not scoring too many goals in the NHL shooting at the goalie's chest. So like, <laughs> if you're going to put one down the middle, put it, like, right there by the five-hole spot. Yeah, like, put it right in the there. five-hole spot, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've always thought that that was weird, too. I'm glad that I'm not the only one. Um, but I, the interesting thing is, for me, um, this is... For hardest shot competition, this would be no the first Shea time. No Shea Weber. Seen. No Shea Weber or Zdeno Chara. No so Chara either. I'm, oh my god, this is gonna be so weird. 
So this would be interesting. I'm, I'm wondering who the new king of the hardest shots going to be, the new champ, if it happens. I hope it happens because I, I want to see it. Yeah. That's going to be so weird to not see Shea Weber in a hardest shot or Z. Yeah. It's going to be so difficult. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be difficult because you're just like expecting these guys and then it's like they're not there. Exactly. It's just a consistency thing. I can see Ovi going for it. Yeah, maybe. The interesting thing about Ovi, Ovi's obviously got an unbelievable shot, but Ovi's number one attribute is his precise. Is his accuracy in his wrister. In in his wrister and in his one-timer, his pure slap shot isn't like so grossly hard that it, you know, outdoes, you know, a, a significant part of the league. Like he'll mm-hmm. get it well over a hundred, but it's still not, it still never has come close to, to Shea's or, or Chara's. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to also think about the fact that Shea and Z are just literal beasts of men. To be honest, I'm not even a hundred percent sure that he hasn't heard a shot in the Capitals. It might be John Carlson. In terms could, of pure it could be J- power, yeah. It might be John Carlson. If I mean, if if Carlson wants to do that, that's fine with me. Yeah, it'd be fun. Uh, who do you think the Jackets are gonna? Um, I want to see Borky make it. Obviously, let's see Bjork make it. But um, if you're if we're just talking about like who's probably a lock to make it, it's probably gonna be Z. Z, Elvis maybe named at least a spot. Um, I don't know about Elvis. Elvis's numbers aren't good because there's going to be limited spots for goalies. So I would that, say. Yeah, you're right. There'd probably be like Freddie. If they do like a couple players, I'd admit, so Z's going to be one of them. Maybe Bjorkstrand would make it, but maybe I think the, two, the two most likely are going to be Z and Borachek. Yeah. Yeah. Be- the problem is, is, uh, because Lanny's been hurt, so like right, so Lanny really hasn't had the time to rack up consideration. Um, meanwhile, you know Jake may only have a single goal to his name, but that's not what he's here for. <laughs> you know who else could maybe be considered, even though he doesn't have the highest point total? Maybe Boone. Boone would be kind of fun. Boone. I feel like Boone's definitely an under the radar guy to have as an all star. Mm-hmm. It would be fun. It would be fun. It would be a good way to like show you know appreciation for the kind of season he's having. Oh, absolutely. Actually, let's let's do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, know. Like, I don't. I, think I don't know how big. much. I don't know how much longer the voting is going to go. But let's vote Boone, people. Come on. Yeah, for real. I'm definitely down for that. I'm going to vote Oliver and Boone. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, I, I hope they still do the All-Star game. Yeah, I hope they do too. If there's going to be I, some I semblance will. of regular season, you know, getting back to normal, All-Star game is definitely like a part of that. Yeah, I definitely, I, I definitely think it helps that it's in Vegas. Yes, for sure. In terms of making it happen. Um, last thing I want to touch on, did you see the thing with the Ducks game? Which part? Uh, the pregame puck drop. Oh, yeah, they had a monkey doing it. <laughs> Rally monkey! Yeah, that's kind of funny. How cute is that? It was really cool. <laughs> I, I was so confused by it. but I, I know. It was, it was kind it's of like, what happened? I don't even know the story behind it. I just thought it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> you can get a monkey to do a puck drop i think you kind of have to do it i think you're obligated yeah i mean we've seen like rally squirrels and rally cats and baseball and yeah or, or like even just for dropping pucks we've seen puppies do it and it's like oh puppy but we like see the service puppies go out there and do it yeah. yeah yeah we see the teams with the team puppies and we love that oh my god and there's so many cute team puppies can yes. i just say can I just say rest in peace to Ovi the puppy? Yeah. That's so sad. It's very sad. But Biscuit's really cute. Biscuit is cute. I want I want Columbus to get a dog. I desperately want them to get <laughs> a dog too. And even the, the Sabres got a new dog. Oh right? yeah, he's so cute. 
that regenerate with the puppy. Oh my god. Yeah. And there's like the meme of him like coiling one out on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. It was just like, oh, that's a horrible look. But yeah, um Rally <laughs> Monkey was cute. Um very unique, very Anaheim. Yeah, no, I, I loved I love the how unique it was because it's different, you know. So yeah. good on the ducks for doing something kind of fun, creative, and new. I mean, you know, it's it's nice that we're seeing teams slowly do that more with different things. Like we had the canes with the storm surge. We have you know, team puppies becoming a thing. We have um, the blues using Gloria as a victory song when they were on their cup yeah. run. The rally cry. The rally yeah. cry. And yeah. Um, yeah, and now we got the rally monkey. And it's just, it's fun to see little things like this happen. Hockey needs more of it. Mm -hmm. With all the darkness that surrounds this sport, like and there's a lot of it and, and as much as we you know we're gonna cover it as hard as it is to talk about Ooh, it's yeah. also just it's it's yeah it's it's really fun to talk about these little be, things too it'd be an injustice not to talk about it right but getting to talk about but, these things like rally monkeys exactly it would also be an injustice to not talk about the fun stuff like rally monkeys. <laughs> uh rally monkeys and 103.5 dawn fm Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I saw a funny thing the other day because, like, my favorite song off the album is Gasoline because it is Gasoline so hits hard. It's, it's awesome. So good. Um, I recommend, I don't know how much you've listened to of After Hours. Listen to the song Faith because that's the song that Gasoline connects to the most. Okay. Um, with some, because he loves making references to previous songs. Well, yeah, that's music. just his thing. It's yeah. It's so if you listen to those back to back, it hits extra hard. But mm -hmm. I love that song. Someone put <laughs> on Twitter the other day. They're like, "Man, gasoline hits so hard in the car." And then they had to put a second. I did. I saw that. <laughs> you like no? I meant the song. <laughs> yeah, I know how to fill up a car. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was great. That was really funny. Yeah. But no, I love gasoline. It is just so good. The whole album is so good. and every It's so much fun. And then, like I said, you know, me getting into the, uh, those two Goo Goo Dolls albums more. Yeah. It's nice to have something to fall back on. Exactly. Um, it's always like, a good day to listen to some new music. Uh, yeah. Um, and I'm hoping to hear some... Uh, this is a terrible way to end this, but I'm hoping to hear some more like ACDC Loxley. Uh, mashups. So I don't think anything. I don't think there's a better way to end a podcast than talking about ACDC. Ah. Gotta love ACDC. ACDC is so good. ACDC is classic. It's funny because, well, okay. Last last thing. People never realize that they're actually Australian. Yeah. And that makes me laugh because, like, I have you know friends that are Australian, and it's like people think they're like british and it's like no they're straight up aussies they go hardcore yeah <laughs> i love their like really old school stuff, like whole lot of rosie uh like the bond stuff yeah bond stuff is classic bond scott classic Absolutely. but i mean you know brian is brian yeah, he's great too. <laughs> it's awesome because you get like the you get the best of both in it. Kind of like similar to like Van Halen too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so schedule update. Uh, Jay's not going to be here Saturday. He's going to be in Florida, so we'll be back on. To, this is our probably our last time of skipping like through a full week. Exactly, because once I get back up to Buffalo, it'll be easy for me to do both days especially with the schedule change in terms of my school and just the fact that college football won't be on on Saturdays anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be easier. You'll to... have more of a regular schedule to fit this in. Exactly. Which is good. Thank God yes. for that. Yeah. Thank God. Um, 
Good luck to the boys against the Hawks tonight, and we will see y'all in a week. Exactly. Let's go. J. Jake Jackets, a podcast for fifth liners and all puckheads around. Follow the guys on Twitter at Snake Garinger, G A R R I N G E R, and at By J Ashdown. And subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen. March on. March on.